Thank you for taking the time to view this training session. In this session, we will focus on understanding various sales scenarios related to Microsoft Azure. Historically, your customers ran everything on-premises in their data centers. Your customers wanted to see their technology. They wanted to be able to control it. But that also meant that they had to pay for it, including cooling, electricity, insurance, and everything else that goes with it. Running on-premises solutions meant buying software packages and licenses. With package software, a customer would be responsible for managing everything, from the network connectivity to the applications. With Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS, the lower levels of the stack are managed by a vendor. Some of these components can be provided by traditional hosters, but very few actually provide an operating system. That is still provided by the customer in this scenario. Typically, the customer is responsible for managing everything from the operating system through the applications. For the developer, an obvious benefit with IAS is that it frees the developer from many concerns when provisioning physical or virtual machines. Next is Platform as a Service, or PAAS. With PAAS, sometimes also referred to as PaaS, everything from the network connectivity through the runtime is provided and managed by the platform vendor. The Microsoft Azure best fits in this category. In fact, because we don't provide access to the underlying virtualization or operating system today, we're often referred to as not providing IAAS. PAAS offerings further reduce the developer burden by additionally supporting the platform runtime and related application services. With PAAS, the developer can, almost immediately, begin creating the business logic for an application. Potentially, this increases productivity and these increases can be considerable. And because the hardware and operational aspects of the cloud platform are also managed by the cloud platform provider, applications can quickly be taken from an idea to reality very quickly. Finally, there is software as a service, or SaaS or SaaS. With SaaS, a vendor provides the application and abstracts customers from all of the underlying components. Office 365 and Salesforce.com are both examples of software as a service. This is kind of a fun slide. This describes the various software models in relation to having a pizza for dinner. We can make it all at home, but it seldom comes out perfect. Or, I can buy the raw dough from a bakery, then do everything else at home. Or, we can buy a take and bake pizza, or have a pizza delivered, or simply go to a restaurant. Each of these relates in essence, to the different types of services that you experience in the cloud. There are four fundamental pillars that motivate a customer to want to consider the cloud. First, they need a faster way to deploy and develop new business. I call this speed to innovation or speed to market. One customer example of this is EasyJet. EasyJet had a legacy reservation system. Every airline has a massive ERP system. EasyJet wanted to build a quick reservation and seat selector application on the web. The company developed all of that on Microsoft Azure, and then on the back end, they used the integration back into legacy systems to actually execute on those reservations. That's a classic hybrid scenario. The next motivator of why customers want to consider the cloud is they want to lower their risk when they're choosing to innovate on something new. Trek Bicycle Corporation was founded in 1976 in Waterloo, Wisconsin. Trek wanted to create a great retail management system for its resellers. In a traditional data center or even a co-location scenario, there is typically a six to eight week process to get a new server running. Trek would spend thousands and thousands of dollars to host a handful of servers. So Trek investigated different cloud options. Trek looked at Amazon, but ultimately chose Microsoft Azure. Azure provided Trek with platform as a service. It allows Trek to focus more effort on providing features to its dealers and less time managing the infrastructure. Furthermore, infrastructure as a service allowed Trek to migrate existing workloads to the same data center that the platform as a service offering is running in. This allowed Trek to save costs on bandwidth as well as keep processes running a lot faster since the data is all in the same location. This also gave Trek better control and security, since it doesn't have to open up additional firewall rules on Azure Virtual Machines. Trek needed a solution that is up all the time. Azure enabled Trek to scale based on demand. With Azure, 
Trek can get something set up in a day or even less than a day. In fact, Trek can go to Infrastructure as a Service and get double or triple the number of servers at half the price or more. Again, speed to market and lower cost of entry are pillars of why customers choose the cloud. Another reason is that they need instant global scale and global reach. Did you know that the Sochi Olympics were all running on Microsoft Azure? The committee developed dozens of customized mobile apps for people to download. All those apps were downloadable from the cloud and running on the cloud. All the events were streamed live using Microsoft Azure Media Services. The organizing committee had to build brand new, highly scalable global websites to withstand the millions and millions of users. All of that was done on Microsoft Azure. Finally, customers want a more intelligent way of spending money with IT. Cloud platforms don't require upfront investments in servers and software, but they still provide direct visibility into IT spending. In most instances, running applications on a cloud platform is less expensive than running them in an on-premises data center. So these are fundamentally the four reasons why customers choose cloud solutions. You need to approach the Azure sale with a story sale. You've got to sell the vision. You've got to sell the application. You've got to sell the business benefit. It's like back in the .NET days when it first came out. You didn't go out and sell .NET. You went in and sold speed and agility and the most effective way for customers to deliver an app. That's the same way that you're going to sell Microsoft Azure. I recommend you print out this slide and keep it handy. Every time you're on the phone with a customer, use this slide. The first column under the blue box talks about infrastructure as a service. Dev and test. Dev and test is probably one of the most effective ways for you to propose how to leverage the networking and the hybrid scenarios for a customer without touching their production systems. Microsoft announced that it now supports SAP and Oracle apps on Azure. What does that mean? Well, your customer calls up SAP because they have a problem. Well, let's look at where it's running. Oh, it's running on Azure. No problem. It's still supported. Continue with the escalation on that call. The same goes for Oracle. What does that mean? We have customers right now that are running SAP and Oracle apps, and behind every production environment, there are at least five to 10 instances replicating that environment. Dev and test, staging, training, QA, documentation, sales, where they do their demos, etc. Talk to your customers around the dev and tests that support those tier one apps. Every tier one app has a dev and test environment. Wouldn't you agree with that? If your customer considers SharePoint one of its tier one apps, then your customer has a dev and test environment. You can help your customers save a lot of money. We have two customers in the New York area that saved over $2.5 million US in the first year just by moving their dev and test environment. Windows Server 2003. Windows Server 2003 end-of-life support is coming up, but your customers don't have to budget for all the new hardware because of the cloud. Do an assessment of Windows Server 2003 applications. Assess which ones could easily lift and shift. How do you test it? You build that lab in Azure. Build it on Azure, run the apps through it, and then help the customer assess and prioritize which ones it needs to upgrade and so forth. SharePoint. We talked about SharePoint on Azure just a moment ago. Has anyone installed SharePoint on Azure as an extranet? Customers love Office 365, but there are still some limitations for a highly customized SharePoint. Building an on-premises extranet on SharePoint isn't that easy, but with Azure, it is. ERP. We talked about ERP systems on Azure. Many ERP and CRM customers see the value of a SaaS offering. They see the value of the cloud. Lift and shift. This is looking at the Tier 2 and Tier 3 applications. Do an assessment and help customers test those and move those into Azure where they can retire that hardware. Hybrid Identity and Management If you have Office 365 customers today and you're not talking to them about EMS and you're not talking to them about Active Directory as the primary disaster recovery site, you're leaving money on the table. It's probably the number one Azure workload that partners are selling. It's pretty straightforward. Some Active Directory environments can get complicated. Getting that work won't generate a huge service contract, but it will enable you to start an engagement with a customer. Active Directory for disaster recovery is a great workload. 
Think of the customers you have today that use Active Directory for Office 365, and they don't have a proper disaster recovery backup for that. If their Active Directory goes down, all of their remote workers can't get to Office 365 because they can't get authenticated. However, if you've replicated your Active Directory environment into the cloud, everybody can still keep on working. Storage Disaster Recovery and Backup We've had tons of exciting announcements in this space, especially when you look into the mid-market space. There are many mid-market and smaller enterprise accounts that don't have proper disaster recovery strategies. You can now go in there and very cost-effectively build them a disaster recovery strategy for their apps, virtual machines, storage, databases, and more. StoreSimple is an appliance that gives your customers hybrid storage. It's a gateway into the Azure storage for all your customers' file stores and SharePoint content. It's a perfect workload for that. Data and Business Intelligence We have partners who are doing a lot of analytics. Business Intelligence, Big Data, and Hadoop. There are wonderful scenarios, scenarios that you can leverage Azure for, whether it's Hadoop for disaster recovery or backups of databases. Apps Everybody wants a mobile app today. Help your customers build an app as a platform as a service application. If you use SQL Azure, it is a self-maintained database. It self-patches. Imagine talking to your customers and saying, you no longer have to have dedicated database administrators for all these databases for your apps. This is the future. If you have customers considering building a new app, introduce them to the advantages of platform as a service. It is the modern way. It is the best, most economical, most scalable way to build modern applications today. You can build a PAAS app that still integrates with on-premises systems. It doesn't have to be an app that's all up in Azure. Thank you for taking the time to view this module. These are just a few of the sales scenarios for you to consider when talking to your customers about Microsoft Azure. We encourage you to review the other Microsoft Azure sales training modules as well.